for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ships. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and who I am serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that they sail with three. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must cast upon a certain island. For the word of God, for the people of God. Good morning, the summer of the Decalogue. Please stand. Hear what Christ our Savior said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The glory of poetry.
Let the church say amen. amen. Why do we worship him? Because of who he is. Our creator, our sustainer. God is our all in all. The one that can pick us up when we're down. Uh, the one that is an everlasting leaning post. We can lean on when we can't lean on anybody else. Amen. So I thank God today for this opportunity for us to assemble together here in this sacred place. Truly, I thank him for our young people reminding us through song this morning. Amen. It's, it's a blessing just to see our young people in the choir stand this morning. We can, they often get criticized for those things that they do that may be mischievous or other, but, but I think we need to just make mention of them when they're here. Amen. And thank God for them being here and for their parents and guardians having them in place today. Uh, I want to thank, uh, take this time, it, it is time to lift our offering, but before I do so, uh, I want to thank the Christian Education Department, uh, Sister Bennett, Sister Bush, and all of those that, that uh, worked with our children yesterday. Uh, amen. Please, if you're here, stand. If, if you worked with the kids yesterday, you're here and stand. Please stand. Amen. 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 Brother Joe was up in the balcony. He was, he was here. And, and, uh, uh, and I, I came in after Brother Joe. And I'm saying that because I think the men did not get the invitation yesterday. Because uh, we didn't have any here other than Brother Joe and myself. So I, I know what happened. They missed an invitation. <laughs> Sister Bennett and Sister Bush did not get the word out to our men yesterday. So that, that's got to be the reason. Amen. So we'll make sure next year uh, that you'll get the word so that you will participate in our, our back to school and back to church. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, also, I'd, I'd like to. Brother Joe and Brother Bennett would like to meet with, with the men after church and all of those that would like to take part in the mentoring program. They said for five minutes, about five minutes, they'd like to meet with you. I'm going to ask that, that you meet in the, uh, in the conference room. Please come to the conference room for five minutes uh, because Brother Ross is going to remain here and meet with our children that are here today uh, so he can talk about the... Uh, what's going to be happening with, with our youth church. And, and so, Sister Bennett, and you might want to stay with him. Uh, uh, you didn't know this. I just, I just pulled this together uh, prior to the service. Since he's here and the children are here. So, amen. So, all right, all right. It is now time for us to do something that we all love to do. And that is give back amen. to... The kingdom of God. Because we understand that God, uh, that the gospel must go forward. And that to get that, to move that gospel forward, we need the help of all of you today. And God has blessed us all with so much, so uh, we're all happy to give back at this time. Uh, so I'm going to ask that the officers uh, move, uh, come forward and, and Lift up offering from the pews, however you plan to do it. So please give my brothers and sisters, they are coming around now with, with the offering basket. This is another opportunity for us to, to, to praise the Lord through our giving today. If God has blessed you, allowed you to work this past week, and been 
hopefully you will give back today. Some may not have it, and if you do, God uh, will bless you for the thought of wanting to do that that you can't do today. Thank you for your giving today.
song. Sing it. thank God today for the spirit of praise of the Lord inspired us today. Amen. Grateful to the children that, that have also inspired us thus far with song this morning. And I don't recall the visitors being welcome today. And, uh, so I ask that you're here today and visiting with us, please just stand so we can uh, see that you're here. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God for the visitors today. You could have been somewhere else, but you, you chose to be here. And so we, we are grateful for that today. It's preaching time. Uh, I'm not going to take up a lot of your time today, but it is that time of this service that God's word come forth today. Amen. Truly, I welcome all of you in here, not only visitors and, and those that are in the virtual church. God knows we, we welcome them today also. The word today will be taken from uh, Acts, the 27th chapter. Acts, the 27th chapter. Starting with the 13th verse. Why are you looking for it? Uh, got my copy.
Acts the 27th chapter. It was read for you today. In such a fine way. So I won't read it all again, but I would like for you to focus your attention on that 14th and 15th verse. And then down to the 22nd verse. Acts 27. Starting with the 14th verse. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. And when the ship was called and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Now the 22nd verse says, Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not. Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Amen. Amen. From those words today, I stopped by here to uh, talk to you a few minutes about lessons that should be learned in a storm. Lessons that should be learned in a storm. Let us pray. Everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, Thou, O oh Lord, who loved us so much that You gave Your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that we might have everlasting life. You loved us so much, God, that you gave your only son, that not only we might have everlasting life, but God, that we may find healing, comfort, a problem solver, a heart fixer. Whatever we need is found in that name of Jesus. We thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit that Jesus promised to be with us, oh God. Now, Heavenly Father, I just ask that you look down upon this waiting congregation. That you search out their hearts today, God. That you clean what needs to be clean. Strength where strength is needed. Bring a smile upon a frowning face. God, I just ask that you speak into their lives today. Use this preacher in a mighty way today. Preach through this servant of yours, God. That your word will go forth and enter the ears of a dying generation today. Oh, God, we need you in so many ways. So, Father, we call on you today because we know that you are the prayer in God. Just ask now, Lord, that you wrap us in your loving arms, that you be a shield. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus, I ask this and say amen, amen, amen. Lessons that should be learned in a storm. In the year of 2000, there was a movie that hit the scene titled The Perfect Storm. And the title of the movie is what caught my attention. For I immediately became interested in knowing what is a perfect storm. And what does it take to make a perfect storm. 
In essence, I, I wanted to know what was going to make it perfect storm, different from any other storm. Now, to be perfect means that the storm had checked off all of the blocks and satisfied all of the requirements to make it perfect. That's why we don't have any perfect Christians, because none of us have been able to check off all of the blocks, nor satisfy all of the requirements. Amen? The story of the movie was built around the lives of six fishermen uh, from Maine who decided to sail their fishing vessel into a part of the sea that they had been warned against. Because of greed and their desire to haul in a great catch, they ignored the warnings and sailed into the dangerous waters. Well, while out there in that dangerous part of the sea, a storm blew up like they had never seen before. The storm was packing 250 mile per hour winds and 150 feet waves that destroyed the fishing vessel and killed all six fishermen. And I gather from watching the movie that, that the storm had gathered all of the atmospheric conditions necessary to make it a perfect storm. And unfortunately for, for the fishermen, they encountered a storm that had just the right moisture unstable air and density to turn it into a powerful and destructive storm. They had all of the makings. And I didn't stop by here today to talk to you about the content of a storm, nor what makes it perfect. No, I stopped by here to talk to you about what you need to learn in order to survive in the midst of a storm. I'm a firm believer that any time you find yourself within a storm, you, you ought to learn something from that storm that will equip you to deal with the next storm. Oh, I ought to have some storm-tested people in here that have survived some storm. Why? Because I found out that not all storms are atmospheric in nature. For some of them are personal, and they can tear at the fibers of your physical and emotional being. Oh, yeah, there are some storms out there that the meteorologists can't predict. They are the storms of life that have the makings of a perfect storm, one that's destructive in nature. Those perfect storms of life can roll up in many forms. They can be physical or, or, or sexual abuse debilitating disease, heartbreak, or pain. And to be frank, we all have been in a storm with the COVID and political climate that we've been facing. Huh? And whatever storms that we've been, we, we ought to learn something from the storm. If nothing else, we ought to learn how to get out of a storm. I read an article that suggested that we all live in a storm cycle when it comes to the storms of life. In essence, we all are either in a storm or on our way back to a storm. So it behooves us to learn some lessons while in the storm. In our scripture today, Paul gives us some lessons on how to deal with storms, whether atmospheric or life. Paul found himself in one of those perfect storms that was destructive in nature. Yet the good news is Paul lived through the storm which qualifies him to teach us how to survive a storm. If, 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 if you want to learn how to survive a storm, then, then observe somebody that has survived a perfect storm. If you have not survived anything, then you can't tell me how to survive. Prior to our scripture, Paul had been arrested for preaching the gospel in Jerusalem. He was tried before Felix and Festus before ending up in King Agrippa's court who did not believe in the Jesus that Paul was accused of preaching about. And after hearing the case against Paul, Agrippa ordered that Paul be taken to Rome to stand before Caesar. 
the first through eight verses. And, and if you have your phone, if you're checking anything, check these verses out. The first through the eight verses says that Paul, along with other prisoners, were loaded on a ship that was headed for Rome. It says that the ship encountered some difficult weather and pulled ashore to wait out the storm. During that stopover, Paul warned that it would be too dangerous to go back out on the dangerous sea. For they were in the season where the storms would persist for at least a couple of months. Paul, Paul, Paul said in that 10th verse, Sirs, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring a great loss to ship, cargo, and to our lives. The 11th verse says that the centurion in, in charge didn't take Reverend Paul's advice, but, but listened to the captain who advised that they set sail. Now, how many of you have been, been guilty of not listening to the preacher, but, but, but somebody outside of the church? Huh? Oh, sounds like some of us who, who have been guilty of taking bad advice from the wrong people. Some of us would not have encountered some of the storms that we experienced if we had not been listening to some bad advice. Oh, maybe not here today. The Bible says that they set sail. And not long after setting sail, there arose a tempestuous storm called Eurachlodon. Eurachlodon was one of those perfect storms that blew in with its unusual destructive wind and waves. Oh, I wonder if there's anyone listening to me today that has ever experienced one of those uh, perfect storms of life. When the burdens seem unusually heavy, when the heartaches of your life ran unusually deep and your trials were unusually insurmountable. Well, I wonder if there's anyone standing in a perfect storm today. Ah, the word says that the storm became so violent that the ship could not bear the wind. Uh, and the only thing that the sailors could do was let the storm take them wherever it wanted to take them. The Bible insinuates that the storm was so threatening that they had to pull their reserve boats into the ship. Oh, yeah, the storm had gotten so bad that they had to pull in the reserve. Is there anyone listening today that has ever found yourself in the midst of life storm where things got so bad that you had to pull in your reserve savings in order to make it through the storm? And even sometimes that was not enough. Oh, y'all, are you listening to me today? Mm, it's apparent that pulling in the reserve didn't help. Oh, for the 18th and the 19th verses, take out your phones and, and look at it. Y'all like to check those phones. Check it out. For the 18th and 19th verses says that they took such a battering from the violent storm that they threw everything overboard that was heavy. The Gospel of Luke says that the sun nor stars appeared for many days and everybody on the ship gave up hope of being saved except Paul. As a matter of fact, Paul came along in the 21st verse saying, Men, you should have taken my advice and not set sail. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. One of the first lessons that we should learn is when you find yourself going through a storm, make sure that you seek advice from a God-fearing person that knows something about trusting God to get them through a storm. I live by the old saying, you can't tell me how to swim if you drown in yourself. Hmm? Yeah, that's bad advice. Huh? I, I don't care about what you read. I, I want to know that you have some experience with the Lord taking you through a storm. Paul had some experience trusting the Lord to get him through. He had been through every imaginable kind of danger and difficulty. And the Lord had always came to him at just the right moment and the crisis in the storm was no different. Paul said, that's all right. Even though you didn't listen to me, I've got some good news for you. Last night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said to me, though we might lose the ship, we will make it through the storm. Oh, that's good news to somebody. Though you might lose the ship, you're going to make it through the storm. It was a promise from God in Hebrews 10, 23 says, for he is faithful, that promise. And, and I don't know a 
about any, anyone else, but I found something good in God's promise. Listen to what the angel of God promised. Paul in the storm, and, 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 and if it's good enough for Paul, it's good enough for you and me. And now, he says, I exhort you to be of good cheer. In the midst of all you're going through, be of good cheer. In the midst of your storm, be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. That's good news. For when we are going through our trials, our problems, and hard times, our storms of life, what is it that God sends us? He sends us a promise for those going through the storm. Huh? I'm glad about that, for I can trust in God's promise. No matter how difficult a storm gets, I, I can walk in his promise. Praise God for being the promise keeper that he is. I wonder if anybody know that today, that God will never break his promise. If you need him to get you through, he'll get you through. If you need him to lift you up, he'll lift you up. If you need him to fix your problem, he'll fix your problem. If you need God, God will never turn his back on you. He's a promise keeper. Paul had no doubt. For he believed God. That's why he ended his testimony in that 25th verse by saying, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it will be even as it was told me. In other words, Paul was saying to those frightened sailors on the ship, I know that you haven't seen the sun for days, but I believe God. And I'm going to take him at his word despite how rough the storm is. huh? Do I have anybody today that's living with a made-up mind which says, yes, though the storm is raging in my life, I'm going to believe God and take him at his word despite how bad it looks. I'm going to trust God to get me through. huh? Despite what I've been through this past week, I'm going to trust God. Somebody needs to trust God today. Somebody in the midst of your storm need to hold on because God is a God that will not break his promise I declare he'll come when nobody else will come he'll make a way that nobody else can make he'll fix what nobody else can fix do you know him do you know him do you know him to be a way maker mm. he'll get you through Paul said in the 26th verse, nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. No matter how dark it gets out here on the stormy sea, God says we'll find some dry land. That's what I like right there. In the midst of the storm, there is some dry land. Huh? Apparently, some of the men didn't trust God. For Paul looked around and saw some of the men trying to lower the lifeboat and leave the ship. Paul turned to the centurion and said, we've got to stay together. If we are going to survive, everybody's got to stay on board. Huh? The word today to someone that's about to give up and jump ship. God is saying, I know that the storm is rough huh? and you don't see a way through. Huh? You see, faith is not about what you can see. It's about what you can become, huh? Don't jump ship, though you can't see it. Dry land is on the way. Huh? Don't give up the ship for better days are ahead. Oh, I know that you're tired of trying to make ends meet. I, I know that you're tired of trying to manage it all along. Uh, uh, weather the storm all by yourself. But one songwriter says, no, never alone. Huh? God promises never to leave us alone the Bible says that just before dawn Paul urged the men to eat for he said in that 33rd verse for 14 days you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food I urge you to eat something how many of you have ever been at that point where you couldn't even eat anything the storm was so bad took your appetite from you. Y'all, y'all, y'all act like you don't know what I'm talking about in here today. I don't know about you, but I've been there. Ah, when the storm was so bad, I, I didn't want to eat. And God knows I love to eat, but, but it got so bad that I didn't want to eat. How many of you have been there before? 
Mm. Yeah. Paul said, tried to urge him, said, eat something. You're going to need it. You're going to need some food to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from your head. All that Paul was doing was preparing them for survival. Hmm? If you really believe that God is going to get you out of the storm, then you need to take care of yourself until the storm is over. Huh? Just because you're going through a storm, don't, don't let it rob you of your appetite. Don't stop praying. Huh? Don't, 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 don't stop trusting in God for a brighter day. The Bible indicates that after the sailors started acting like they wanted to survive, daybreak finally came. And, uh, and, and they could see a little land. Huh? You see, sometimes it behooves us to stand upon our faith and act as though the storm is going to pass. Huh? Yeah, if you expect the storm to pass, then you need to act as though it's going to pass, even before you see any signs of it passing. Instead of always focusing on the storm that surfaces in our lives, we should start focusing on how it's going to be after we make it through the storm. Yeah, in other words, start looking beyond your storm and see God working it out for you in the midst of the storm. The storms come to strengthen our faith. Our tendency is to believe in what we can see, prove or touch. But in a storm, God wants us to trust him, to see him, to see his power and his wisdom. Storms come to rely, to teach us to rely on God and not on ourselves. In the storm, in the storm is, is, is where we'll find God. It is the enemy's task to keep you in the storm, yet it is God that gets you out of the storm. I wonder if you know that today. Somebody in here today is in the midst of the storm, but I'm trying to tell you about a God that will get you out of the storm. Now let me show you. And I'm going to leave you alone after this because I know you're ready to go. Now let me show you how the enemy will try to keep you from getting your breakthrough. Hmm? Have you ever wondered why when it looks like you are just about to see some daylight? Something always, always seems to hinder you from coming out of the storm. Hmm? Just when Paul and the others could see some land, the ship hit a sandbar and began to be torn into pieces before they could reach the land. The soldiers on the ship got so frustrated and fearful that they decided to kill the prisoners to keep them from escaping. But Paul said, you don't have to kill us. God is going to spare every life. The 43rd verse says that the centurion listened to Paul and told everyone to swim. Swim for the shore. And those that cannot swim, grab hope to the pieces of the ship. That this is where I want to go here. <laughs> grab hope to the pieces of the ship. Huh? And, and float on the broken pieces. Huh? If anybody knows anything about floating on the broken pieces of life. Huh? Holding on to your broken pieces of life. Huh? Keeping your trust in God while holding on to the broken pieces of your life. Mm. Y'all act like you don't know what I'm talking about today. Yeah. Do you know what the Bible says? It says that they all made it to land. And some came in. Check this out. Some came in on broken pieces. Ah, I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. Huh? That new, good news to me. I, I, I don't have to have a whole lot to get in on. All I need is, is broken pieces. I, I just need a piece. Of, and a piece of God can work through a piece. Yes, he can. My young people back here, they're looking like they don't know what I'm talking about. But if they live long enough, if they live long enough, They'll be in the same spot that, that the adults are in now. Huh? Yeah, and they'll know what broken pieces are. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, that says that, that sometimes we have to grab hope to the pieces of our lives and hold on until God fulfills his promise to bring us to a safe landing. Hold on 
to the pieces until God gets you through. You can make it on the pieces. I, I want somebody that's going through the worst time of your life to get this picture today. The Bible says that there was a storm. There was a shipwreck. And sometimes our lives will feel like a shipwreck. Huh? But thanks be to God, there was land that God had promised them that they would get to. Yeah, well, I wonder if just one of you can get excited today about the fact that no matter what storm, what storm you are in the midst of, there is some clear land, clear land ahead that God has promised to get you to. No matter what you're going through today, how bad the storm is, there is some clear land, there is a clear way, there is a path to the other side of the storm. God has promised to get you there. Oh, I, I want you to remember today that God is more powerful than the storm that you're in. Well, sometimes we will lose some stuff in the storm. And some of it we need to have gotten rid of. Hmm? Yeah, yet God will get us through the storm. God is greater than any storm you may face. Uh, Oh, the storm will pass because God sent his son, Jesus, who with all power stood in the midst of a storm on the deck of a ship and cried, peace, be still. And the storm obeyed his will. One songwriter said that the wind and the wave shall obey his will. Do you know that today, huh? If the wind and the waves shall obey his will, your problem is not too, too hard for him. God can make a way out of no way, huh? God can bring you in on broken pieces. God can keep you when nobody else can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yeah, God is greater than cancer. God is greater than your divorce. God is greater than financial problems. God is greater than death or any of the storms that we will find ourselves in. Hmm? God is greater, greater than your storm. There's a storm out on the ocean. And it's drifting this old way. If your soul not answer it, it will drift away, drift away, y'all, drift away. It will shoot. Sing it with me, church. Your soul not anchored in Jesus, it will surely drift away, drift away, drift away. It will surely. Anchored in Jesus, it will surely The doors of the church are open.
We'll speak peace. Be still in the midst of your storm. Whoever you are, whatever you've been doing, wherever you've been, if you need an anchor today that will hold you in the midst of the storm, let me introduce you to Jesus today. He will hold you in the midst of your storm. He will clean you up. He'll fix you up. He'll lift you up. Hi, right, Jesus, we'll do that for you today. And what I like about it, it doesn't matter what the age is. Jesus is waiting today. He's patiently waiting today. If you're here today, come. Come, my brother or my sister. Turn it over to Jesus. Turn it over to Jesus. Yes. That's that the preacher's moving. Support this brother today. Is there another today? Is there another today? Well, if everybody else in here is all right with the Lord, I've got one other plea. If you're searching for a church home today, you might already be all right with the Lord. But you've been searching for a home. If you're here today, come. We're glad to welcome you in today. We're glad to take you into this church family today. Gladly. Come, and if you're out there in the virtual church, you have the opportunity. First of all, if you want to turn it over to Jesus, you can do so. You can do so out there in, in the virtual church. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord. Here I am. Take me. Use me. Forgive me, God. He'll take you in. Believe on his son, Jesus, and he'll take you in. He'll save you. All you have to do is, is say it, and then give me a call after this service today. I'll gladly talk with you. Give us a call today if you're out there in the virtual church. 804-372-5564. 804-372-5564. If you're looking for a church home today, you've been searching across and around the, the virtual churches around, and you've come, you've landed there at Third Street Bethel, and you decided that this, this is this is where, where I want to be. This is the church I want to make my home. You can you can do that out there at the virtual church. Just give them a call today. Give them a call after this after this service today. Call that number 804-372-5564, and we'll take you in. Gladly, I'll gladly welcome you in.
We give God praise and the glory today. For him coming. He's like the rest of us. He, he's experiencing some storm. But we know that God is able, don't we? That's all you need to tell Brother Gabriel Vereen that God is able. That's all you need to tell him. You don't need, you don't need to say anything else to him. If you approach him today, just say God is able. How many of you know that he's able? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So we're, we're, we're happy to have him in. That's what storms would do. Do you know that some storms God sends and some he just allows? Because they're there, they're there to prove your faith and to strengthen you. Because every time you get out of one storm, you ought to know that you can get through the next storm. So we thank Brother Vereen for coming today. And we look forward to talking with him more. Amen. I know usually we would come around and shake hands, but we can't do that until we get through this, this, this COVID. If we ever get through it. But one thing about it, I don't know about you, I always see God on the other side of it. Huh? It can stay there as long as it wants to, but I see God on the other side of it. So we're happy to have this brother today. I, I, I want you to just stand today. Bro. And, and, and just face the church today. They're standing to welcome you in. And if you're, if you're talking to them along, right at the close of the service, okay? God bless. say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord, Lord who was who conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 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 Praise God.
Before we come down off of this mountain that we've been on, again, because visitors are very important to us, we do have visitors' cards that, that Sister Dawson is holding up. I'm going to ask visitors if, if you would please just fill out a card for us and, and turn it back in to the ushers at the door. Please take time to fill, fill out the visitor's card because you are important to us. It's just good to know that you're here. So please raise your hand so that uh, Brother Jenkins will can give you a card. While she's passing those cards out, I'm going to give way to Sister Gwen Davis to, to make an announcement about our worship in the park. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Third Street, good morning, visitors. I want to formally invite everyone on Sunday, September 25th, Sunday, September 25th, we will be worshiping in the park. We will be worshiping in the park, so please come out. 11 o'clock, we will be at the Bird Park at the Shield Lake Shelter. On next Sunday, we have directions for everyone, but if you're in Richmond, you come right off the Amelia Street entrance and right to the left. So we would love to have you. It's going to be food, fun, and fellowship, but we need you to be there. So Sunday the 25th, do not come here. Come to Bird Park and be at the Shield Lake Shelter at 11 o'clock, and I promise you we're going to have a good time. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. God bless you. Our brothers and sisters, again, give, give our young people a, a great big hand. I love seeing the children in place, and it is especially uh, good when I can see my own and uh, my grandkids as part of the, of the choir, too. And I don't think that I should just ask you to bring yours out and mine stay at home. Amen. So I thank God for all of them today being a part of this worship service today. As we get ready to leave this mountaintop. The spirit of praise also blessed us today. I thank God for them. As we get ready to leave this mountaintop, I ask that you remember what happened on the mountain. Take it down. Take it home. Take it to work. Take it to school. Take it into the streets. Take it somewhere and tell somebody what happened up on the mountain today. Amen. Sister Rita's holding a sign up back there. Look, see who is on your ballot. So please stop by out there today. As we leave this mountaintop now, I ask that you remember these words that is found Acts 27 chapter, the 14th, 15th verse says, But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we just let her drive. And that 22nd verse says, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Hmm? For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. You might have to lose some things, but not your life. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Do you know who you serve today? Saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. My Lord, my Lord. Lessons that should be learned in a storm. Now may the grace and the peace and the love that God can give you. May the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit abide with you. Now and forevermore, let the church sing. Amen.
Amen. Please, you remain and, and, and talk with, with Brother Ross. He's going to have a talk. So if you just come down on the front here. Stay where you are. Or stay, stay where you are. Yeah, stay where you are. Brother Ross is going to talk to you. Those, those that are not up there, please come and, and, and come forward so that Brother Ross can, can talk to you. He needs 12 and up, right? 12 and up. 12 and up. 12 and up. 